Let's not create some cult following. Yeah. Should today. we create? That's yeah. the mission. Can we do a that? Whole cult. So let's keep the as castration off suicides. the table. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 The only ones Otherwise, that don't I don't work want out. It. I mean, yeah. what are we talking yeah. about? Dave? We're, we're, we're just that's like, just a club. Probably murder suicide. Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. Well, look, somebody's totally. got to be last. Right, but no Kool Aid because I don't like Kool Aid. Oh, all right. Oh yeah, I don't do sugar. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so we can put it in just like. Like some Metamucil or something. Mm, does it yes. need to Maybe be maybe like a salad? Does it need to be a powdery mix? <laughs> In the Caesar dressing. <laughs> what, if, what if we make a nice balsamic vinaigrette? Yeah, it's, it's I like totally it. Totally yeah. poison. I like, See, I like what you're saying, and nice... I like how you're saying it too. Oh, hi everybody! Won't you join us? We're starting a cult today. <laughs> uh, welcome back to another Cinefix Now roundtable. Today we're talking about cults. Uh, and also talking about movies that just don't get enough love. Yes. That uh, perhaps should have achieved some sort of cult status and they just didn't. Just didn't do it. They just, they just didn't work for whatever reason. So we're going to talk about what movies we wish would have gotten more love. We're going to try to spread the love for those movies. We're going to talk about maybe why they didn't turn that corner into starting an official suicide pact kind of cult. So let's get started. Who wants yes. to start? Who's most excited about one I'll of the movies? I'll start since T's going to start. In Bruges. Oh, oh yeah. That's so good. Yeah, great Colin film. Farrell, Ray Fiennes. Yeah. And uh, I feel like no one ever talks about how good it is. But anytime I, I crowbar it into a conversation, yeah. there's enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think when people do have seen it, they're like, oh my God, that movie's amazing. But you're right. It's not one of those big ones. And I think it was the first time. I remember that I was like so sick of getting Colin Farrell sort of shoved down <laughs> my throat. And then I finally saw him Bruges, and I'm like, oh, he's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. How do how did I not see this before? It also came at a time in his career where he needed to kind of take a step back. Because mm -hmm. like Colin Farrell was doing the movie star thing, mm -hmm. and he was in all of these giant movies. SWAT? And, and then in Bruges is one of these little movies that he did when he was kind of on his way back. Right. Yes. And he's spectacular in it. Yeah. But I think you're right. Every time I do talk about it, it's, it's like the Pacific Northwest. Every time I hear about anybody that's been to Portland, the only thing they can say is how much they enjoyed it. Right. Yes. Yeah, I think part of why I loved it too was it was after the Colin Farrell mania. Mm -hmm. So I was already past resenting him being in everything and being everywhere. So I was able to just kind of watch it objectively and really love it. And, and I don't know if it's just because I saw it a long time ago. And, and like, like we were talking about, whenever we talk about it, everybody that's seen it has, has loved it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how under the radar it was. Like commercially, it certainly yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. And it's also like just because of the way that Bruges is is spelled. Yeah. yeah. Like it, you know, a lot of times you look at that and it doesn't. You're like, no, no, I was looking for that movie in Bruges. Right. And like yeah. you see it, you're like, oh, that's a different. That's a different <laughs> word altogether. Yeah. It's like the desol desolation of Smaug. Smaug. Like no one knows how to say it. I've got one that that people didn't see for a different reason. Okay. So. Uh, um, Live, Die, Repeat, or Edge of Tomorrow, yes. or whatever you want to call Edge it, of uh, based on All You Need Is Kill. Right. Um, people actively didn't see it because of Tom Cruise. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the fact is, it's a really good <laughs> movie. People, yeah. including T. But it's, it's really good. It's a really interesting adaptation of, of the light novel. Um, all You Need Is Kill. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's really good and worth seeing. And surprise it was just such a surprise how much yeah. i enjoyed it yeah you know i think that's one of those movies that uh kind of turned me back around to tom cruise you know because it's one of his like least uh i'm a superhero guy type thing i mean it's funny his character sort of evolves into that but he starts off as this very like cowardly yeah. guy this very I, I think wiener. it's he's it, a straight up wiener to start that <laughs> oh totally and also i feel like it's the first time ever that he wasn't standing on apple boxes every time yeah, he was yeah, walking yes. with people and uh, and i felt like he was like really like he 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 did his best effort at seeming like a person yeah. for the first time in a long time. Also, you know, for people that don't like Tom Cruise, you got to see him die over <laughs> and over and over again, and that's such a catharsis for yeah. people. No, it was a, it was a real fun and surprisingly funny yes. too. Yes. Like I thought it was very very funny and. Um, but uh, coming, Oblivion was just right. the one such, immediately before that. Yeah, it, it, Tom Cruise's movie immediately before that, with uh, the guy that did Tron, was yeah. just nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, was yeah that so was a real piece of shit. It was and all unfortunately, style over this substance. one looked almost identical. Did, yeah. It was like Oblivion plus Groundhog Day. Is the <laughs> yeah. way it looked from the trailer. Right. So I think that's why a lot of people were turned off, yeah. including me. But I do think, but Edge of Tomorrow slash now that it's in home video, whatever, it's uh, Live, Die, Repeat. Live, Die, Repeat. Yeah. 
Um, that, I think, officially qualifies as underrated. I don't know that we need to start a cult for it, though. Oh, I, think it's, I think it's super underrated. Yeah. And I think a lot of people didn't give it a shot that maybe should have. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't I know. I don't know. I that will it, watch it the next time I see it on HBO Go or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's worth it. It's yeah, fun. not not it's, cult worthy. It's but solid action. The point is underrated. Yeah. Yes. But that's a good. That I feel like we're we're closing in on on like a real good definition of what makes a cult movie. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now can I go next? I I, no, you I can't. feel like <laughs> oh really okay. <laughs> okay, I feel like, um, you know, so far the, the problem is a lot of us are picking movies that they're not exactly like indie movies, um, and mine's kind of like that, but this is a movie that I feel like is almost like a modern day classic, and, and a lot of people don't really talk about it, is Warm Bodies. The zombie romantic yeah. comedy movie yeah, is fully, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's funny, we watched it the other day, and I thought to myself, like, I don't know how this movie got green lit. It's like good yeah. with good acting, a good script. It's touching. It's interesting. It's not about action. It's not about superheroes. Uh, and it's this really wonderful movie that, like, I just I, I love. And it's got a it's got a hip soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's uh, a hipster zombie who listens to records. <laughs> yeah. it's I, true. I really it's true. I really love that movie too. Um, and that was another one too that like anytime I talk to anybody about it, they're like, oh dude, love that movie. Yeah. Might have just been a marketing misstep with that Might one. Have been. Maybe. I well, and I remember when it came out, it did pretty well for, for the, the budget that it had, for the company that produced it, uh, it was a success for them. Yeah. I was afraid to bring it up because it sort of rides the line because there are people who've seen it, but I just feel like it's so good and people don't really put it in that category of yeah. so good. They're like, yeah, that was cute. Because yeah. I, I, I watch it after watching a lot of other garbage, like the Twilight <laughs> movies, for instance, and I'm like, it's this amazing. A it's like a totally different species, you yeah. know, like yeah. how much well, better the it is. Other, the other problem with that, with, with that one, though, is that it, it, it's really easy to lose track of that movie yeah. in, the, yeah. in the zombie movement. That it came out in, 100%. you know, it was like yeah. it was like, all right, well, we've done everything else with zombies. Now let's do a romantic comedy, right? Yeah. And so, like, I could understand being just conceptually, I can understand being put off by the fact that that movie exists. Mm -hmm. You know, like people are are sort of anti that just because it's like, well, it's another zombie movie. It's just now it's cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but that that's a good one though. I mean, does does it deserve a cult? Well, it's not like Army of Darkness good, but you know, it's pretty great. Well, was was Army of Darkness even Army of Darkness good? Uh, Army of Darkness <laughs> is an exquisite masterpiece okay. of comedy <laughs> exquisite. and and exquisite. fantasy and horror. Uh, in Hero's Journey, uh, and Reluctant Hero's Journey, uh, and uh, and religion, <laughs> and post-apocalyptic. I mean, it's just the greatest. More adjectives, please. More yeah, adjectives. it's a it's a corn it's a cornucopia really of excellent artistry, composition, <laughs> editing. Uh, it's Hand just business. on. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. how many? Yeah, exactly. uh, how many movies does a guy get attacked by books and turn into <laughs> miniature versions of himself? No. Well, doesn't that happen to Jack Sparrow? Mm. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it, it will, movies, there's like mini. It will in the fifth or sixth or seventh one, I'm sure. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, well, I. What about uh, Better Off Dead? And one crazy summer. I'm putting Savage Steve Holland's oh, interesting. best work in in one category here, just for the sake of argument. Uh, what's wrong with those? I mean, that's that's something I haven't seen since childhood. So, I mean, right. why and not? I haven't seen them at all. Why have? Why not? I just don't. Yeah. Think Are they on Netflix? It inspires much. I mean, honestly, I feel like John Cusack is part of it. I feel like as much as I like John Cusack, like. High Fidelity, no one was like High Fidelity was brilliant because John Cusack was brilliant. Is there any movie John Cusack's been in that he has altered the course and made that movie so much no, better? I, I, think I think he- People probably feel that way about Say Anything. I, well, I feel like he's, okay. he's got that sort of soulful kind of, uh, doesn't really know what to do with his life, kind of questioning his life kind yeah. of vibe, yeah. like, it, which is why he was good and I think better off that and Gross Point Blank. Gross Point Blank, yeah. I love. And, and High Fidelity too. Like, he, he brings, he, when he was still trying, because yeah. I think we can all agree he's not anymore. Mm -hmm. no. When he was. Especially after his, Dragon Blade. Oh, yeah. Dragon he's Blade. Not, yeah. I, think he, I think he definitely brought a, a unique kind of energy to the stuff that he was in, but, but better off that, I mean, I, I never really understood why those movies don't get a whole lot more love because. 
I mean, is, is it like Fast Times at Ridgemont High and, uh, you know, Days and Confused? Any more recently, Wet Hot American Summer has kind of taken up that sort of real estate yeah, you in, know, our, in our hearts? I think so. And I think actually you bring up a good point is I feel like when you look at those movies like Breakfast Club, Fast Times, you know, it's about a, a larger group of people. Yeah. And, you know, there's the male and female side. And I, and I feel like what I remember from... The, the movie you're talking about, is it's a little more just based on one character struggle, sure. and maybe that's part of it. Yeah, but also, like, Fast oh. Times at Ridgemont High, I mean, there's there's the epic boob scene, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, that, that, that is the scene that, that really everyone remembers. So maybe Better Off Dead is just two titties away from cult status? <laughs> it could be that, it could be that, yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I bring up one that I feel like we probably all have a lot to say about, it's in the comedy genre, and I think is a super important movie, is Idiocracy. I was just gonna say that. I love yeah. Idiocracy. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a great one. I, that one deserves cult status, For sure. absolutely. Does it though? I think oh, 100%, so. I think here's, it might have already kind of reached a little bit, but here's not why, Here's why I don't think it, well, I think the movie should be studied. Right. Because of how frighteningly prophetic it is, it yeah. is yeah. and yeah. prophetic, yeah. like it's it's not a comedy <laughs> so much as it is a frightening documentary about our future. <laughs> like the more stuff that happens that was in that movie, yeah. the, yes. the scarier the, and less funny the movie becomes. Like mm -hmm. that's why it came and went because everybody's like, I don't want to think about that. Like, right. we're, we are on our way to to accidentally just using Gatorade to water all of our crops. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, of course it's from Mike Judge, you know, yeah. the genius Mike yeah. Judge. I, I love pretty much anything Mike Judge has done. Like, yeah. I can't think of anything he's done where I wasn't on board. Exactly. Well, yeah. and the thing, the other thing about that movie is it was in post for something like like a year and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because they kept fiddling with it and they, mm -hmm. they and because, partially because Fox, nobody at Fox could put their finger on why it wasn't working for them. Right. Because it was so goddamn scary. They didn't yeah, realize they were yeah, making exactly. a horror movie instead of a comedy. <laughs> yeah. So that's why they were like, why? I don't understand why. I think part of being a cult movie, though, is being a little, you know, being fearless and kind of scaring you a little bit, you know, uh, because it's going to buck the, the, the system, you know, what everyone expects. And that movie is amazing. And I really feel like everyone should watch it. Yeah, I, I don't care for it. I really Which don't. is weird because I feel like the things you've said about it are very positive. No, that's what, look, I'm just, I'm just frightened of it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, I don't like scary movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know? can, I, can I bring up one more since you mentioned that? I mentioned this before. We did a, do you remember we did a show a long time ago you're, about you know, like. You're asking to do two in a row. I know, but like I have. Okay, you know what? Right. I guess we can technically go back to you now, Lacey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I, the problem is I now have two that were both oh, different no. from what we talked about before. They're both in the horror genre. Uh, but I, I have to go and with one. Oh, no, 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 wait. Let me go. I have to go with one that I may have mentioned in another show I can't remember, but uh, New Nightmare. The oh, Wes Craven movie, which is uh -huh. right in the middle of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, uh -huh. yeah. is spectacular. Wes it is, Craven's new Nightmare. It, it is a the, great film. The Tokyo Drift of the Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> not, not by, it is the Fast Five of the Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> movies. Um, it is, so the thing about New Nightmare is it came out, it was like the fourth or fifth, I think it was the fifth, and it came out uh, like 10 years before Scream, and it is the progenitor of Scream because it's a meta movie where the actors who play the characters are playing themselves in the real world and they talk about how Freddy is actually a, a, a demon that exists in the real world. Mm -hmm. And so Robert England is in it as himself. Oh, Wes wow. Craven is in it himself. It is so super meta, yeah. like way yeah. before anyone was doing this stuff. And, and you know, sadly Wes Craven just left us, but he was an amazing filmmaker who didn't get the respect he deserved. And this movie is wonderful. It is so, I think the problem with this movie is that it was right in the middle of what had become a very cheesy franchise. Yeah. And so no one gave it a chance, but it is spectacular. Well, I need to like, revisit it because I saw it a million years ago, and I don't. I, it only like rang a bell when you said like Robert England plays himself. With, like, yeah. I remember that, but I don't remember anything else. Well, and and I think that might be something too to say about cult movies is that they need to sort of well, they need to be a little bit ahead of their time. Yes, one hundred percent. Because there's part of part of yeah. being a cult movie is like you know oh I I thought it was cool when. Blah blah blah. You know, exactly. it's it's being it's early. It's being early to the party. Like, yeah. well, I liked them before they got signed. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I like the early stuff. Um, and another movie that I think was way ahead of its time was uh, Last Action Hero. He's <laughs> just gonna yeah. say yeah. that Were you? too. Ah, <laughs> I gave you a chance to jump in. And you I blew know. it. Oh, you <laughs> blew it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, I, I think, and, and I haven't seen New Nightmare, but just hearing you talk about it, that's the first thing that popped yeah. into my head was yeah. it because it's such a met. Yeah. It was it was big budget. Cheesy Schwarzenegger, balls to the wall action, but making fun of that at the height of 
those that movies. Mo yeah. And of well, course, and Shane Black wrote it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Also, like the last time I watched it, I realized that that uh, you know that movie is actually where Boz Lerman got the idea to do his Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Because of that trailer. The Macbeth trailer Macbeth. that he does. That's oh in black God, and white with machine guns. One hundred percent. Oh God. Yeah. It's such a good movie. That movie deserves. Like New Nightmare, I could see being. I mean, like a cult movie that like there's an indie theater that shows it every Friday night at midnight yes. kind of cult thing. Like, I mean, Rocky Horror Picture Show is the best example of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Big Lebowski, they have whole conventions. They have whole, like, white Russian conventions and everything. Right. Lebowski um, Fest. Yeah. Lebowski yeah. Fest, yeah. you guys know that. I mean, they, like, I, I could see New Nightmare being an every Friday night at midnight kind of, kind of thing. Uh, just just because it's a horror, there's something about the horror genre that I think lends itself to that a little better. I think... Maybe Last Action Hero didn't get there because there are so many moments in it that aren't self-aware enough, possibly. Mm. Like, so much of it is, like, self-referential and, you know, kind of lampooning these action movies. But at the same time, the actual core plot of the movie is just super 90s slash late 80s in feeling with, like, the magic tickets and, like, yeah. just a lot of, like, weird bullshit. It's just like, could you have been a little bit more like wink and a nod about this part? Because I think yeah. that would have put it over the edge to being like, we realize this whole thing is silly, right. but they were a little too precious with the actual plot part. But at that point, I don't think the movie gets made. Back I then. suppose so. Yeah, I mean, it was also it also had a rough time because it was it was right in the middle of when those action movies were, were just so big and and, and adults Arnold was in the, the world biggest. Yeah. couldn't couldn't deal with it. But everyone that I've talked to that was a kid when that came out was like, yeah. that movie's so great. Yeah. That's so. We cool. weren't ready to make fun of the thing that we were currently in love with. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it was um, it has like Arnold playing Arnold in it as well, which is a bit of a mind. Well, and, and the part where he's like talking, like Maria Shriver is talking him out. It's like, don't talk about the restaurant. Don't, yeah. you know? It's it's so funny. Yeah. Um, and then the one-liners in that movie yeah. are the best of all. Like he he walks up to a guy, asks him if he's a farmer, then he then he says, yeah. "Here's a couple of acres," acres. and kicks, kicks him, him in, in the, the nuts. nuts. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty great. It, nothing gets better than that. Yeah. That's perfect. And I think if they had like maintained that tone, it probably would have never been made if it were like that through the entire yeah. core like plot of it, but I think that's also what prevented it from getting that cult status. Yeah. But there's a, there's another Shane Black movie that I don't think, I, I think sort of falls in line with, with In Bruges that I wanted to talk about was Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Great yeah. movie. Which Great is movie. a spectacular movie. Yeah. Shane Black uh, wrote and directed it, yep. I believe, right? It's the first movie ever directed. Yeah. And uh, with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. and Val Kilmer. At a very interesting point in Downey Jr.'s career. Oh, yeah. That was pre-Iron Man, This was right? a yeah. Colin Farrell yeah. in Bruges, like yeah. coming yeah. back up kind of kind totally. of situation. Shane Black was one of the first people to trust him again because yeah. he had spent a few years uh, after prison just doing like kind of smaller roles. Yeah. And Shane Black put him back in the spotlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the movie's so good, and it's another example of a movie that anytime you mention it to somebody that's seen it, they love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure how far that permeates into, like, sort of zeitgeisty, like, everybody yeah. knows this movie. I yeah, don't think but, it does. But in terms of, like, cultiness, you know, how many times do you want to watch it? Like, Lots do, do of times. <laughs> I, I own it, and I've seen it several times. I mean, I and just really, talking about it right now, I'm like, I might go watch that tonight. I, I love the movie. I think it's great, but I don't know that I'd want to see it every week. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So um, this movie's big, but I think it deserves cult status because it's truly, I think, one of my favorite movies of all time. But Demolition Man, oh, can I just oh, point yeah. out that yes. that movie is so brilliant in yeah. so many ways, yeah. and it, everyone well, should see it. That movie walks this weird line of like sort of legit futurist sci-fi mm -hmm. and yeah. also really dumb action movie yes. from the from the 90s. Right, mm -hmm. right. Like, didn't that take place in 2008 or something like that? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> like I it think was, it's, it no, I think it was go, like 2025 or something. I'm pretty sure it was I don't think it went that far in the yeah. future. I'd have to look that up, but. Either um, way, not far enough. I yeah. feel like it didn't go far enough into the future for like the only restaurants to be Taco Bell <laughs> and like all that stuff, but and just cryogenic <laughs> freezing technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because that that had that had so many things. It had the like let's go ahead and conjecture about what our future is going to be mm -hmm. like, and yeah. then it also had some like classes, you know, classism sort of. Whatever. And it also had Rob Schneider. And it also had Rob yeah. Schneider. It also had Dennis Leary, fre yeah. like yes. fresh off his MTV commercial thing, <laughs> like yeah. doing rants and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then Stallone and Wesley Snipes just being like these dumbass action stars that they right, were. Yeah. 
but uh, but but I think it was it, you know there was a bit of satire I think for action movies in in the their characters because they were so obvious and like Simon Phoenix and John Archer I mean they were so obvious John Spartan John Spartan, Spartan. sorry even more yeah John Spartan it sorry it was worse than <laughs> <laughs> it was worse yeah, it was worse than I said um, and uh, uh, and it's very much about uh, PC too about you yeah, know the PC yeah. movement and if yeah. what if the you know what if the PCers took over the world right. basically yeah. I think I think Demolition Man though qualifies under doesn't get enough credit. Mm, yeah. Yes. Not quite deserving of any other lofty, lofty status. I think it should be a know? cult. I would build a religion around that. <laughs> They're probably, um, well, and and, and you could have a good and bad because I, I, I think Wesley, I, I love Wesley Snipes, grew up with Wesley Snipes, always bet on black, he's Blade. But at the end of the day, uh, it's Simon Phoenix for me. I, he's I my he's favorite role. He's better than he was. Yeah. Wait, let me, let me ask favorite you, role. in the Demolition Man cult, would people knit? Oh yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, and they'd say teddy bear at like yeah. any random moment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, you mentioning Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and R D J earlier reminded me of another movie that I love that doesn't get brought up much. That's Wonder Boys. Oh yeah, uh, Wonder Boys, which is Michael Douglas yeah. and actually uh, Toby Maguire. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course Robert Downey Jr. I love that movie, and that actually reminded me of another movie that I thought was funny and forgotten, which is Outside Providence. Oh, that's oh, yeah. great. that movie's amazing. Yeah. Yes. No one ever you mentioned hit yeah. a pocked cock cock. <laughs> yeah. what you, they, How many friends could you possibly oh, have named drugs? drugs. Yeah. Oh my god! And the, and the giant bomb that's oh, made out of like the so radiator good. or whatever. Yeah. That was that was a Fairly Brothers. Yeah. They just yes. produced that, right? Or did they direct it? I they can't even remember. Might have directed it's been it. so long, but like I love that movie. There was a time in my life where I watched it, you know, kind of a lot. But yeah. that it's been a long time. I'm like, why did we forget these movies? Well, and that's the kind of thing that that. A cult movie needs like mm -hmm. it needs to be quotable. It needs to be rewatchable. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to sort of have a feeling of uh, like nobody else understands this mm -hmm. kind of angsty. Oh, big time! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, every like no matter how many people love the movie, nobody loves it the way you do. <laughs> right, like, that kind of thing. Well, to go back to High Fidelity, which is a Nick Hornby book, mm -hmm. the line is, uh, "It's not what you're like. Or, no, it's not what it's what you like, not what you are like." Yeah. Yes. And I yeah. think sort of like acquiring these things that you love, these cult movies, they sort of help you identify and feel like you're yeah. part of some community of other weirdos who are just like you. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so I have one. Um, it's Ricky Ho, the story of Ricky. I was gonna say that one. Revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. Ricky uh, Ho, age eighteen. Yeah, this is okay. I have okay. I have what no is idea. This? What no, this of is. course oh. you have no idea because for the most part nobody should have any idea because you've only seen it if you've like yes. imported it, like found it an imported copy oh, or okay. something. I think it's a but, Japanese movie. But, but you based may on have manga. seen a shot from it because yes. back in the old days of of the Daily Show, the Daily like Show. like way back when the yeah. Craig Kilborn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, remember the head remember exploding, the, head the guy yeah. slapping the head. That's, That's from, from Ricky Ricky o. O. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and so it's this the story of this guy who I think his girlfriend gets murdered and then he gets sent to prison for yes. it. Uh, and at, at this prison there are these different gangs and then there's some kid who's kind of dumb who who plays music with a with a piece of grass yeah. um, and not sure you're actually explaining the movie I'm not, well I'm not okay explaining it at all. this is what, the movie's, this is what the movie's about this is what the movie's about it's about this guy who for some reason has super strength they yes. never explain it yeah. he goes to jail uh, and all these other guys with super strength try to kill him yep. and basically heads are getting smashed people are exploding yeah. so far you're it's, describing tango and cash it's it's <laughs> actually a lot like tango and cash but japanese and it's it's nuts. Yeah, it is the most funny. It's actually the gore is a lot like uh, Dead Alive. <laughs> yes, it's like gonna, it's yeah, so extreme. Which, by the way, Dead Alive is a cult movie, but we're seeing if you haven't seen it yet. And <laughs> it's 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 brilliant because yeah. it's nuts. Well, I, I remember in college this time where where like there was a bunch of us and we watched it every night for a week. Yes. Wow. I, I don't know why, that's, but we couldn't stop it, watching yeah. it. I mean, that is definitely the kindling that yes. starts. The cult fire. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple more foreign films as long as we're on the topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, one is Sexy Beast. Oh, ben, ben Kinsley. Kinsley. That's kind of started his, Great. he's a badass yes. thing. Yeah. yeah. He had never really, like, he was still sort of known as Gandhi, so it was such <laughs> yeah. a reversal of expectations, and he's so yes, great. Yes, Roundtree, yes. <laughs> no, 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 Also, <laughs> that, that launched Ray yeah. Winstone's career for yeah. Americans, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Was I think that's why I had Winstone on the brain earlier. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, <laughs> was in, he was in everything for the next, like, five or six years after Sexy But I fucking love that movie. I think it's so great. You guys have to check it out if you haven't seen it. Oh, and check out... 
the guy uh, that directed Sexy Beast, his, ne I don't know if it was his next movie, but a subsequent movie was Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson. Oh my God, that movie's brilliant. That movie's, insane. That movie's like, so that, good. That movie can't be a cult movie because I, like, I don't think it's very rewatchable. No. Brilliant as all sh it is. Underrated. If yeah. you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. Yeah. Eyes wide, looking straight into the camera, because <laughs> uh, yeah. it's worth the experience of watching it. Um, but that's a really great movie. He's a really talented guy. Could not be more different from Sexy Beast. Yeah, that so. movie reminds me of you know when like you go to like the um, the the museum and there's like the painting of like the hanging meat. And you don't know, you're looking at it and you're like, this is horrifying, but interesting. That's yeah. like watching Under the Skin. It's an incredible, an incredible movie. No. But my, my other foreign film uh, pick, at least, you know, since we can't do this forever, is uh, Rabbit Proof Fence. Oh yeah, it's Australian, Kenneth right? Bran yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Kenneth Branagh's in it. Um, it's directed by a guy named Philip Noyce. And that movie noise. is noise. It yes. is so good. It's uh, about these two Aboriginal girls in Australia who essentially get kidnapped to become like servants, and uh, they have a they manage to escape. And it's all about following them their journey home across this rabbit-proof fence that traverses the entire continent of Australia. Oh, wow. So it's like. I don't even remember how long, but several months long of a journey because they have to walk over a thousand miles, and it just like and they're being pursued by these trackers. So it's just Jeez. a great movie, you guys. Wow. I own it if you want to borrow it. All right, uh, all right, everybody. Let us know what you think. What is your favorite cult movie? What movie out there deserves a cult? Deserves a whole group of people that go see it every Friday night at midnight and then drink what they drink and dress up like the yeah, characters. Yeah, cosplay. Give me some cosplay. Factor. Yeah, oh. but not like comic book cosplay. Play, but like, like, you know, the dude cosplay. Yes. What movie has that potential and it just hasn't broken through yet? Let us know in the comments down below. Click like and subscribe and stick around Cinefix for all the rest of our great movie content, and we will see you next time.